Monster Project, directed by Victor Mathau. Now, the story here focuses on a group of friends, and they've been making kind of YouTube videos of fake horror sightings and stuff like that, prank stuff, and they're hoping to get massively rich off ad revenue from YouTube. Bit of an untimely bad situation going on that one, fellas. You could have chosen a better time if you know what I mean. But anyway, moving on. So they decide that they want to kind of give up, get up to the big legs by interviewing supposedly real monsters, or at least people who think they are monsters. So they basically put an ad out in Los Angeles to interview anyone who believes that they have some kind of like supernatural affliction, and they get three responses. One from a, apparently someone to claiming to be a vampire, a skinwalker, or kind of like a werewolf type creature, or and a demon. So they go to this spooky old house with a bit of a history, and uh, on the lunar like a lunar eclipse. And with these three kind of like strangers that turn up, all who claim to be monsters. And as you can probably imagine, stuff goes sideways and it all gets quite out of hand. So I've got to be honest, I, with this film I was absolutely, couldn't wait to see it. I was really looking forward to it. It was one of my most anticipated horror films of the year. And the, uh, the company has done a great job in really marketing this and really kind of uh, getting uh, the buzz going. It actually was one of the most, um, I think it trended on the, on the IMDB page and become like the most viewed trailer of one particular week, which is pretty good for a kind of a fairly kind of low budget horror movie. And they've done a good job with the, the viral marketing. So really this has come uh, as, as quite a, uh, in the, at least in the horror circles today, a very anticipated movie. Now it's a found footage style film, first of all most. And like I said, I went into this with some pretty lofty expectations. I was really looking forward to it. Now I watch a lot of low budget horror films, so I never really have expect too much necessarily. But was I, was I impressed with this film? I've got to say... Overall, they had some good areas, but overall I was kind of let down with this movie. It didn't quite live up to the hype and had some kind of serious problems, I felt, which we'll discuss. There is some good stuff, I'll come on to that, but let us get on with any negatives first of all. First thing to talk about is some of the acting here. Some of the acting here, at least the way the characters are, are directed, I would say, is, is not good. Uh, we have a character called Jamal, who is this kind of the comedy relief, and he's, his, his kind of style of humour, or the way he's directed at least, is just like a cartoon. He actually acts like a kind of a Warner Brothers cartoon, like a Daffy Duck or something like that. Uh, looks like he's in a different film, if I'm completely honest. Um, absolutely distracting when you're kind of watching this, what is meant to be somewhat of a serious subject, and we have uh, the, the, the Jamal comedy show, which doesn't seem, it seems out of place, but it's not just limited to him. There are some other kind of like uh, uh, creaky performances, but I got a feeling it's more, it's kind of maybe a mix of that and maybe the writing. We have a kind of a villain that is revealed and it's very kind of like a cackling kind of like bad guy, little bit cheesy, I've got to say on that one. The cheese factor is all over this film as well. This is a pretty cheesy film when it comes down to it. And there's just some kind of glaringly silly things that happen. Also, some logic issues and things that don't make sense within the film's own mythology. What do I mean? Well, let's take these kind of three monsters. We have a, a uh, skinwalker, which is essentially a werewolf. Now, we're explained that this basically is like an animal. It can't be controlled. So when that go when he starts kind of transforming, we understand that he's basically like an animal and has no control over what's going on. Fair enough. The woman who's a demon is, uh, in some cases, she's in control and kind of like, uh, you know, he's just essentially a scared little girl. But when the demon takes over, it's its own thing and has its own kind of like uh, agenda and can't be controlled. So again... You can't really expect that one to be too predictable. However, the vampire rules, I would say, are set out a little bit different here. The vampire seems to be completely coherent about what she is doing and uh, really isn't a kind of like an uncontrollable beast. So it, it comes as a bit of a shock when she just turns, starts in, in like a, a, turns into a kind of like feral monster because it's not the way the vampire was set up. So it doesn't make sense and it's in its own mythology. Can we set up her as this kind of very kind of competent, if somewhat uh, eccentric character, but not a drooling monster? So there's stuff like that. And then we, when we get to the actual um, the, the plot points in the story, there's, there are some quite cheesy moments, to be fair, and very kind of obvious jump scares. The story kind of takes a bit of a twist at the end, which I didn't feel it needed to. I think it actually had enough going on where this kind of the final twist happens and we find out there's a maybe a bigger picture in it all. 
I actually felt it didn't need that and kind of maybe was trying to kind of cram a little bit too much in. Uh, so the special effects for the most part were good with the exception of uh, the demon who is this kind of Japanese girl called Chiori and she just kind of looks like when they transform her it looks a little bit kind of like it sticks out a bit because it's kind of CGI whilst the skinwalker and uh, the vampire have more practical effects so when we see the the video effects it's a little jarring because it kind of stands out compared to the rest of the effects there so um well, it's not terrible but it just doesn't look very particular it kind of looks like you know early 2000s kind of cgi basically but what did work for me um i've got to say there are a couple of performances i quite liked uh, our kind of i guess our hero character uh, one of the hero characters called brian thought was actually quite good he's a he's a kind of a uh, a drug addict who um is trying to keep this kind of a you know this stuff at bay essentially and he he does i thought a quite a good uh performance and a flawed uh, a kind of like a protagonist basically and um yvonne zimmer who plays shayla who is the vampire although we don't actually see a lot of her on screen she comes across as this very kind of like alluring presence and kind of we actually get quite a good scene where she's being interviewed and she comes across as uh, a quite a strong character again it kind of annoys me that they've changed the uh the way that kind of ends up but there you go the actual action doesn't start until about the halfway mark it all goes sideways around then but i've got to say when we do see the uh the kind of the um supernatural stuff happening on screen with the exception maybe of some of the demon bits it's very very good Got in a, a kind of found footage style with a variety of different camera angles but you see quite a lot on screen so that was quite good and it's, it makes of some thrilling sort of uh sort of scenes basically where we have these kind of supernatural creatures uh, you know attacking these kind of like these hapless fools who happen to be in this house um i do think maybe this setup was a little bit too on the nose oh this is house which has got all these kind of like satanic stuff that's been going on and that just happened to be a coincidence now if you were the people at the beginning of the movie you were thinking hang on just a sec so there's a, there's a, there's a it's a frustrating film because i really wanted to like this film so much more than i actually did um and like i said i think maybe its ambition was uh, a little bit too big for it I, it's a shame i feel it went it ended up going in the way that it because i just didn't think it needed to do that i would have spent more time maybe with these people and it just seemed they, they said some odd things that they do so i've got to tell you this so this really bugged the hell out of me so when they before the actual it all kicks off we have these three people these three characters who at this point the, the these people think they're all fake they just think they're weird nutty people who think they're monsters but they tell them to wait individually in, in these dark rooms like they go in there there's no lights and stuff what are they telling them just to sit in a dark room just while you're interviewing each of them it's just silly and it's just stuff like that it's cheesy because it just wants to have this kind of spooky scene but come on you're telling these kind of like people that, that just to sit in a, in a dark room and wait for to be interviewed stupid uh disappointing i've got to say not a bad film but certainly kind of not the classic i was hoping it was going to be I'll give this movie a 6 out of 10 because I do think it had some good elements in it and when you watch this film you won't be bored and there are some very good kind of creature scenes and kind of action sequences but it could have been so much better and that is the frustrating thing about this film. It could have been a great uh, classic cult film whilst I actually think it's somewhat of a letdown. 6 out of 10. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.